Last year, the commercial drone market was valued at $13.4 billion. This year, that number is expected to nearly double. One of the first major uses of commercial drones was during the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina in 2015. Over the pandemic, drones have been used to deliver vital COVID supplies to harder rural communities across the globe. However, it is in the retail space where this technology could bring real transformative change. 85% of everything you can order on Amazon is under seven pounds and in theory can be delivered by a drone. So imagine, imagine how big the saving is to Amazon alone, right? Throughout the pandemic, rapid delivery services have exploded in popularity and we're now in the midst of an arms race to see who can get your package to you quickest. While retailers and delivery companies scramble to get your order to you in under an hour, drones could more than half this time, taking the arms race to an entirely new level. The idea of 30 minute delivery is a quantum leap, even today, and it can only be done by aircraft. So it's a, it's a pretty cool thing. I think consumers would, would ultimately want it. With clear incentives for both retailers and consumers, how long will it be until our weekly shops start landing on our doorsteps? Drone delivery is by no means a new concept. JD.com, one of China's largest e-commerce companies, has been carrying out commercial drone deliveries since as early as 2017. Its initial program has focused on delivering goods to China's most rural communities, where vehicle-based delivery is not an economical option. Drones deliver goods to what are essentially micro-distribution centres, usually a small village or even a village's house. They are then distributed among the village by what JD.com calls ambassadors. In the West, things are a little bit further behind. In 2019, Google's owner Alphabet became the first company to receive FAA approval to begin carrying out drone deliveries to real people. Since then, Amazon and UPS have managed to secure the same license, which technically designates them as an air carrier. While successful deliveries have been carried out by each of these companies, they've almost entirely focused on suburban environments where drones do not have to fly over people's heads avoiding various complex safety and regulatory barriers. Nevertheless, these companies have proven definitively that the technology works. So why aren't we seeing a wider use of drones in everyday shopping? We spoke to tech entrepreneur, Parcelfly CEO and all-round drone expert, Martin Warner, to find out more. If you're going to deliver tens of thousands of parcels in one city a day, like London, Paris, Dubai, wherever, you need about 1,500 to 2,000 drones in a 44 square mile area. That's a lot of birds. That's a lot of flying things going on, right? And all they've got to deal with is aircraft zone areas and, and ascending and descending helicopters and aircraft. So lots of virgin airspace. While companies have solved the issue of how to get a package from store to door with a single drone, launching multiple drones which will operate autonomously is much more difficult. Now the challenge is to ensure thousands of drones can operate similar routes without crashing into each other. There is a lot of work going on here. Um, and, and this is another area that's preventing it rolling out because you can't, you can't organize one drone. You've got to organize hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. It doesn't work. There's no benefit case if you haven't got, you know, one and a half, 2000 drones, ultimately in a city like London. And uh, there'll be no doubt, we haven't got it at the moment, but there'll be a final bit of legislation on this kind of flight management system, which we, what I call is an enterprise autonomous management system. It's the brain that sits between the customer notification in the retail system and the proprietary drone that goes up and delivers and comes back down. And the brain has to monitor that at all time. And in the center of the air traffic management is this concept called random autonomous routes. Random Autonomous Routes is Warner's proposed solution for the issue. It uses machine learning to map the ever-changing flight patterns of drones and provide a ubiquitous system for all the drones operating in a certain area. The system can then be replicated at almost anywhere in the world. So if we were looking down at London day one, we would see like a Jackson Pollock painting, right? It would just look, all the flight routes would be crazy. If we look at day two, we'd have another Jackson Pollock painting of flight, but it'd be completely different. So we've got to figure out what that flight separation, what the weather does to these routes and how much um, floor and ceiling we have. So what's the flight envelope for 1500 or 2000 drones to, to fly in? You know, how much room do they have to abort and trim? How much room do they have to stack and flow in a line or synchronously? 
All of this is done by algorithm. And it's remarkably different than anything else in aviation, in military, in passenger, in transportation. There's nothing like it. So that that's a challenge that sits as a result of, of tooling up or scaling a thousand to two thousand drones versus just having a provisional license and just gaining more data. That's where we are. And that's kind of the challenge of what we've got to do. But it will come. It will come quick. Once drones can operate safely in the air, the next issue is finding somewhere for them to land. Maintaining, charging and storing thousands of drones in the world's most densely populated and complex cities is no easy feat, even for retailers with considerable store networks. We're going to need some greenfield sites. We're going to need some land. Uh, so if you're going to deliver to in LA, again, also magically 44 square miles or, or London, you're going to need three hubs to cover it. And the main reason you're hovering it is when you want, you know, these things are, are essentially about torque or, or, uh, and, and thrust from the props and the weight. And we have to balance the two. So the more weight we put on it, the slower it flies and the more energy it uses. So seven pounds on one of these, par I call them parcel drones. I don't think we really have a name, but we might say air delivery drone, but most people like to use the word parcel drone. Um, yeah, in, in reality, we're going to need a, a couple of thousand and they're probably only going to fly for about 30 minutes and on seven pound payload. If you work that out, you need three areas to, to work from. So the big area is how do you go and set up a city without having to start from scratch? Companies have put forward a number of fairly wild ideas to solve these issues. Amazon filed a patent in 2017 for an airborne fulfillment center. This is essentially a giant Zeppelin-like airship which will float above a city at 45,000 feet. Drones would then be used to ferry both workers and merchandise to and from the city below. In another pattern filed months later, Amazon proposed using parachutes to drop parcels to customers, allowing drones to deliver packages without having to find anywhere to land. Its key rival Walmart also issued two patents in 2019. One idea was to position trap door-like devices on the top of buildings where drones could land and place their package. It would then drop through a network of tunnels and slides to its recipient. These are just a few of the hundreds of drone technology patterns issued by Walmart and Amazon alone. Regardless of whether they ever see the light of day, they demonstrate just how much time and money retailers are piling into this space. But it's not just retailers putting their weight behind drone delivery. But the CIA and the FAA in America have already proven that they're up for it and have granted provisional licenses and once you grant it once, you've got to grant it all the time. So Amazon, Google, Walmart, they've all got licenses. So now we're in this next stage of provisional. It's a test bed license, so you've got to prove yourself step by step. So now it's not if, it's when. They've made the, the government has made it, or the regulator has made the decision that we want to understand the benefits. You know, we want to get the, the carbon and the, the strategic savings for the environment. But we also believe we can achieve the, the synergy and, and safety measures that will give people the comfort. In December 2019, the UK's Civil Aviation Authority published new guidelines aimed at making long distance drone operations, quote, an everyday occurrence. This essentially made it legal to test drone deliveries beyond the operator's line of sight. Until then, it had been illegal to fly drones beyond a maximum of 1600 foot and 400 foot above the ground considered a major hurdle to the rollout of commercial drone delivery in the UK. In May this year, this allowed Royal Mail to become the UK's first parcel delivery carrier to deliver mail via an unmanned drone to the Isle of Scilly, more than 70 miles out to sea. It forms part of a major new government-funded out-of-sight autonomous drone delivery trial. Aside from being a monumental technical achievement, it shows that regulators, the government and private business are all piling resources into making drone delivery happen. With the technical, regulatory and financial hurdles largely out of the way, Warner believes we could be seeing drone deliveries in our everyday lives well within the next decade. Five to seven years, like mainstream. Like once we're at that point, it's going to take off super fast.